Hey guys, I'm Kyle from The Distilled Man, and up next, I'm gonna share my experience with Beckett Simonon shoes, plus I'm gonna tell you about four things to look for in a quality dress shoe. Every man needs a good quality pair of dress shoes, but how do you tell the signs of quality? If you don't know what you're looking for, chances are you're probably just gonna be using price as an indicator. And if that's all you're looking at, chances are you're gonna overpay. Recently, I had a chance to try a pair of shoes from a company called Beckett Simonon. And full disclosure, Beckett Simonon did sponsor this video, but they had no input on the content, and frankly, they, did, they didn't even know what I was gonna say. <laughs> but fortunately for them, I actually really like their shoes. In fact, I think that Beckett Simonon shoes are a great example of the four things that you need to look for in a great dress shoe. The first thing to look for in a great dress shoe is quality leather upper. Now, not surprisingly, the material that your shoe is made out of is pretty important, but you probably also notice that there's all different types of leather. There's uh, top grain, there's uh, full grain, there's genuine leather. Now, what do these even mean? Genuine leather is basically third class leather. So it is leather, but as this great graphic from Real Men Real Style shows sort of on the right, it's the what's left after they split off the top layers of the better quality leather. And a lot of times it's actually spray painted to look like higher quality leather. Next, there's top grain leather. And this is what's left over after they sand down the outer layer of the hide to get rid of imperfections. And what the one advantage of this is that it, it is a little more uniform in terms of look, so it's great for sort of mass market products, uh, but it's not as durable and it doesn't have as much character. Finally, the best leathers look for is full grain leather. And this literally comes from the very top layer of the hide. So it's gonna have more imperfections and nuances from the, from the outside of the animal, but it's also going to have more character. It also will develop more of that rich patina uh, character that we, we look for in really high quality leather. And incidentally, it's also the strongest and most moisture resistant of all the leathers. So the shoe that I received from Beckett Simonon is the Kane Oxfords. And these are really elegant shoe. They essentially remind me of just a classic cap-toed Oxford, which is just a very timeless shoe. And these are full grain calfskin and they've also been uh, vegetable tanned and they're chrome free. So your skin and also the workers who are, who are making them aren't being exposed to harsh chemicals. The next thing to look for in a good quality dress shoe is a stitched leather sole. Now the construction of the dress shoe is obviously very important. Some people say the most important thing. And in shoes in general, there are basically three types. There's the cemented or glued type, there's Goodyear welted, and then there's Blake construction. As you might guess, cemented or glued shoes are more common and better for those sort of like mass produced uh, casual shoes and sneakers, right? For dress shoes, you really wanna invest in Goodyear welting or Blake construction because one, they're gonna be stronger and they're gonna last longer, and two, you can replace the soles. So think about it, it's, you know, if you spend a lot of money on a dress shoe, it'd be kind of a shame to throw them away just because the sole wears out, right? It's almost like spending a bunch of money on a car and then sending it to the scrap heap just because the tires wore out. If your shoes are made with Goodyear welting or Blake construction, you can give them a second life or maybe even a third or fourth by resoling them. With Goodyear, an extra layer of leather is sandwiched in between the upper and the sole and everything is sewn together. And usually you can tell a Goodyear shoe because there's stitching around the outside that's visible. By the way, thanks to Andrew over at Primer for letting me use these images. And this is probably the most sturdy type of construction, but it's also the least flexible. And because of the extra steps and material involved, it's usually the most expensive. These Kane Oxfords have a durable leather sole and they use the other main type of construction, resolable Blake construction. With Blake construction or the Blake stitch as it's sometimes called, the, this upper is sewn directly to the insole and the sole. So the stitching is actually inside the shoe, which means that you can have a slightly narrower profile because um, the welt is not actually sticking out on the edge. And because it's usually less complicated than Goodyear welting and there's fewer steps, it's generally less expensive. The third thing to look for in a great dress shoe is leather lining. Having a natural fiber like leather goes a long way in terms of comfort and also in terms of preventing odor. These Kane Oxfords actually have a full grain leather lining that makes them extremely comfortable and breathable. 
And the final thing to look for in a quality dress shoe, at least in my opinion, is affordability. And this may seem counterintuitive to you if you don't know the signs of a quality dress shoe, because again, you might just be using price as your only uh, judgment. While there's some correlation between you know, cost and quality, in general, at retail, you're gonna be paying a 200 to 300% markup. Um, and so that extra cost that you're paying isn't necessarily going towards the quality of the shoe. What you're actually paying for is the cost of carrying inventory, paying rent in the store, and to hedge against risk. Because think about it, if you're mass producing a bunch of shoes at once, and you don't know how many you're gonna sell or what colors are gonna sell, you have to price each shoe in such a way that it makes up for that potential waste. Beckett Simonon keeps their shoes extremely affordable because they don't have these other extra layers of cost. So most of their shoes average between around $160 to $199 for shoes that would easily cost upwards of $300 in a normal retail environment. They can do this because all their shoes are made to order. So they don't carry any inventory, they're not paying rent in the store, and they don't have the kind of waste that you see with uh, mass producing shoes. So here's how it works. Each month they release about 8 to 12 styles that have been designed in-house. You select the style you want, you select your size, and you place your order. The hard part is you do have to wait, so it takes about 6 to 8 weeks for the shoes to be finished. So if you've got a wedding to go to in the next 3 days and you need a pair of shoes, you know, your best it's probably not going to work out. You best head to Nordstrom or something. I know what you're thinking. There are other crowdfunding and pre-order models out there, and usually they have some challenges. One of the biggest ones is that they usually have minimums. So if not enough people order, then they won't do the production run. But Beckett Simonon doesn't have any minimums because they actually own and operate their own factories. And also, unlike other pre-order arrangements, they offer free, ex free exchanges and free returns, which is pretty generous if you think about it, especially since you custom ordered the product. The other really interesting thing Beckett Simonon does is they actually involve you in the process. Uh, as Nicholas Hurtado, one of the co-founders, told me, they like to call this backstage access. So you don't just wait six to eight weeks and you don't hear anything. They actually send you periodic updates along the way to tell you what stage your shoes are at. They'll send you videos. So you get a sense of where the shoe, how the shoes are progressing. And also you even get to see the faces of the people who are actually making your shoes, which is pretty cool. So if you've known about Beckett Simonon for a few years, there may be an elephant in the room that needs to be addressed. When I started researching Beckett Simonon, I noticed a handful of reviews and forum threads around 2014 or so, where people seem to be less than satisfied with the shoes and frankly, the overall experience. But then I noticed something else. Some of the reviewers who initially had critical things to say a few years ago about Beckett Simonon were starting to update their reviews for the positive, like my friend Justin over at Fine Young Gentleman, who incidentally knows a lot more about shoes than I do because he actually runs his own shoe company. When I spoke with one of the co-founders, Nicholas, he explained that back then they had a different model and setup. They were actually outsourcing the production of their shoes to a vendor in India, and ultimately the quality didn't end up being to up to their standards. Since they were still outsourcing the creation of the shoes, like most brands do, as Nicholas said, they lost control of the most important part of the product. And personally, I think they also just weren't set up to uh, properly handle the influx of initial orders that they received, so they couldn't quite maintain the quality and, and customer service level that they would have wanted to. But now their process and their business model are entirely different. As I mentioned earlier, they actually own and operate the factories now. So they're responsible for all aspects of the creation of the shoe. So in many ways, they're an entirely different company now. And now instead of focusing on quantity and speed, they're more focused on quality and value. As Nicholas told me, we have less sales volume overall now, but I like to think we have better customers. If you're interested in experiencing Beckett Simonon for yourself, I do have a discount code for you. If you enter distilled at checkout, you can save 15% off and I'll uh, go ahead and leave that discount code and the link in the description as well. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you liked the video, please do me a favor and hit that like button below. Also, if you wanna see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and you can do that now by hitting the Distilled Man logo that should be right about here. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.